Hi everybody, my name is Teresa. I'm a movement artist and I teach for the PACE program in Lafayette, Louisiana. PACE is an arts integration program managed by the Acadiana Center for the Arts for Lafayette Parish School System. Today, we are going to be learning a little bit about time and making a giant human clock. So uh, we'll tell time using our bodies today, but you do need some supplies. What you'll need is some paper. You'll need like 15 sheets of paper. Any kind of paper would do really, but uh, you wanna use sheets that are a little bit bigger. So I'm using eight and a half by 11, that's fine. Um, construction paper is fine, line paper is fine, whatever kind that you would like to use. You need two different colors, uh, either crayons or two different colored markers to use today. And if you would like to cut your numbers out, we're going to use those to make the numbers um, on our clock. So if you'd like to cut them out, you'll need some scissors. And I also used some masking tape as well to kind of secure them on the floor. You'll need some room as well to be able to make your giant clock. So you want to have uh, enough room for you to lie down um, head to toe and kind of turn around right so some enough room to move we're going to get started today by actually uh, I'll show you guys how to make those numbers and um, don't forget you can pause the video anytime you need so if you need to rewind see how I did something or pause it while you're cutting out your numbers or um, drawing them that's fine too all right let's get started Okay guys, so we're ready to make the numbers for the face of our giant clock. And so what you'll need is some paper. You'll need about 15 pieces of paper. I just use regular old eight and a half by 11, but if you have something else like construction paper, something that's a little different size, that's good to use too. Um, you need two different colored markers. And if you'd like to cut your numbers out for your clock, uh, clock you can use scissors, but if you don't want to cut it out, you could just use them with the pieces of paper too. So either way, I think I'm going to cut mine out. So what you have to do first is we have to make all of the numbers for the face of the clock. So those are numbers one through 12. So I started off by making one, by making the number one. So we're going to do one number in each paper okay so when we get to double digits like 10 and 11 and 12 you have to do one for the one and then another piece of paper for the zero okay so first thing that you'll do is you'll write your number in one color so i i have like a a kind of tealish green and an orange color that i'm using for my marker so you will write your number almost as big as the paper with your first one. So you can see I wrote my number one here. And then we're going to use the other marker to trace that number and make it a little bigger and easier to use, especially if you're going to cut it out, we need it to be bigger. So we're just going to draw a line all the way around the number, but we want to use leave some space in between the outside color and the inside color. So we should have white space in between. So you can see how I just did that. And if you want to pause any time, I'm gonna show you, I already did mine, but I'm gonna show you how I did each one, okay? So you can see I'm tracing around all the way up like that. So that's my number one, okay? And then we'll go on to number two. So I wrote my number two with my teal. I started up top right here and curve around this way, and then we go straight across, right? Now, I started on this side, so I started about where I did before. I go straight across like this. I'm gonna go up and curve around, leaving space in between the outside and the inside. Now, when we get to the edges, I like to just go straight down that way, and then across. And making a nice outline this way too. All right, moving on to number three. My three is a little messy, but that's okay. So is life. So we'll go straight across this way and down and then big curve around. 
Now we'll use our next color marker. So I started right here and then straight across again, leaving some space, right? So I'm kind of following, going the same uh, shape as the line before, right? So it's like following along, but just in a different spot, leaving some space around. Okay, there's our number three. So number four and numbers with with holes in the middle of them can be a little bit trickier. So start our number four, a straight down line. We go back up to the top, across like this, right? Okay, so number four has this little triangle window in the middle. So we can't forget about that, those triangle windows. So I'll start again. So I'll start on this part and then I go across, right? Make a little right angle, straight down, right back across, and we'll come down, across, back up, across, and then we've got to make this diagonal line. Okay, so we trace around it. Now we have to do the middle, so we're going to make another smaller triangle in the middle right there. All right, there's our number four. Moving on, Oop, wrong pile. Number five is next. So, you guys have a favorite number? I like the way my number five looks. So we're going to start at the top, we'll go across. I know some people start right here this way too. I usually start at the top. But if you start a different way, that's okay. You can do the way that you like to do it. And then straight down, and then we're going to make a curvy line this way. So we had some straight lines. Now we've got a curvy line. All right. We'll start right here. Boop. And across this way. And we'll have to go down, around, make this big curve all the way around, following here. Now we curve it around like that. Aha. Uh -huh. Straight up and all the way. Across, we've got a number five. What's next? Number six, all right. Don't forget we're switching out our markers every time. So the middle, I start at the top with my six and I do a kind of curve down and then swoop around, right? Now number six has a hole in the middle of it too. So we've got to do a little, little oval window. So I'm gonna start right here. I go curve, right? Now I'm gonna kind of, so this is a little different. Yeah, we're gonna curve up and around this way, following along. And if you need to see anything again, you can always rewind or pause it so you can take a good look at it if you don't have enough time. And then we do our circle in the middle. All right, number six, moving on to number seven. You know about seven, right? I like the number seven. So we're going to go across and then down. Okay, so just two lines with that one for the middle. On the outside, we have a few more lines to do. We'll go across, right, and down, and then straight across and back up, and across and back up for our seven. Moving on to number eight 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 is great okay so sometimes people do i did my eights like the little circle circle way and i think for this time do it this way because it's a little easier so we'll make a circle up top with our inside color circle at the bottom with our inside color all right now let's do the outside outlines first so we'll go we could start i, I like to start right at the top yep and around, leaving space in between. And around, now we go inside. We have that oval here, and we have that oval here, leaving space in between. So now that's the inside color. Did a little switcheroo. All right, moving on to number nine. We're almost there. So our number nine is going to be here. We're gonna swoop around, straight down. 
You got it. Now starting at the top, nine has a, a circle. It's a there's a closed shape, so we've got to do a circle in there too. Okay, so we went around. Now, oh, gotta leave that space here. So we don't want to touch that. So we go straight down this way, across and up. Aha, uh -huh. so we want to make sure that our lines meet with those outside numbers. So this will just do our oval right in the middle there. All right, there's our number nine. So for number 10, remember we're going to do one number for each page, right? So we can't put 10 on this. We have to do one number for the one. So you guys saw how to do a one already. But I'll show you again. So I started up here. Now if you do this just the straight down kind, you can do it that way too. I like fancy ones right here across. Yep. Boop, 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 boop. I also like sound effects. What is the other number in 10? Zero. So, oops, wrong color. Inside color first, so just like a big oval or circle. And outside oval or circle. And inside oval or, oval or circle. The next number is 11. We're almost there. So that's two more ones. Boy, we've got a lot of ones going on today. So here we go. Yep, straight across here. All right, and here we go. Here we go, here we go. You guys are getting it. So I traced that. When I was tracing, it was much less uh, time than when I was really actually drawing it. Okay, so that's one of the ones for 11. Okay, I showed you so many ones already. So here's our other one for 11. I think you guys have got this. So if you can, if you need to pause it, of course you can pause it. So we know how to do our 11. And then for our 12, that's our last one. So we have another one and another two. Okay, excellent. So that's all of our numbers. Now, if you want to cut I'm gonna show you how to cut one, but I actually already cut out some numbers for myself. But if you want to cut, you can pause it, but I'll just show you how I cut one of these numbers. You wanna cut on the outside line, right? So if I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut here, all around that outside line that I did. That way I'll have a big number one so you can see. I'll just show you, I'm gonna hold it up in a second. Holding up and cutting, not the easiest. So I'm just cutting all the way down here, across here. Now I'll cut straight up this one. Whoop. I'm actually going to start from the top and you can do this trick where you like, kind of push your scissors forward and it doesn't take as much time. Okay, I've got a straight line this way. So now here we go. Boop. Yep. Uh-huh, see, cut that one. Now I need to do this one. Oh, that's just one quick snip. Uh-huh, I'm gonna come back down here because this is also one quick snip. Good, now I just have this one. I like to turn my paper when I'm cutting instead of turning my scissors. You guys might know about that already. Okay, so I cut out one of my number ones. All right, so I wanna show you one more thing. So you guys can cut those out if you want to. If not, if you just want to use your paper, that's fine too, because we need to get moving. But I want to show you, so with a zero, right? So a number that has a hole in the middle, like a zero or a four or an eight or a nine. To cut that out, so I'll cut all the way around first, real quick, like, whoop, here we go. Cutting around. Mm -hmm. Kind of turn, I'm kind of turning my paper. I like to cut stuff. Okay. Uh, so I'm kind of turning my paper. Oops, I went off a little bit. That's okay, because I can fix it. Turning this around. Then it's not all the way a shape like a zero yet, because it still has, we didn't cut out the middle part. So what I like to do for this is I bend it just a little bit. I don't like to bend it so much where I have a crease, so I'll just kind of like fold it. You see that? That way it's not making a crease. And then I'll take my scissors. Whoop, it made a little crease, but not so bad. And I just did a little slit, right? And not a big one. We wanna make sure it stays inside of those inside lines. So now that I have a little slit here, can you guys see that? Whoop, there's my bum. 
on. Okay, so now you have a little slit here. You have a place where the scissors can fit in. So now I'm gonna do a little snip all the way to that inside orange line. You see that? I snipped right there. And I'm gonna just kind of snip it in across like this. So now that you have these little snips going on, you have somewhere that your scissors can fit. And now I can get back to turning my paper around again to make a nice zero, okay? So now we've got to gather up all of our numbers, right? Either finish cutting them out if you're cutting them, if you're not, either way, we've got to gather them up and we're gonna bring them into our movement space so we can make and uh, be our giant clock. The first thing that you're gonna do, if you are using masking tape, you wanna use this. I've got all of my numbers in order, but I turned them upside down. So I did cut them out. There's one, two, three, four. You can see I already stuck some masking tape. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So now that they're upside down, I'm going to take just a little piece of tape, I'll rip it, and I just roll it just like that so it sticks to each other. And I'm going to put one little piece of tape on each number going all the way down. So I'll show you how to do that one more time. So I just rip it with my fingers, and you know that if you need a grown-up to help, you can ask a grown-up to help too. So you just kind of roll it with your fingers like that. Try not to stick it to your fingers too much. And then stick it on the back of your number, right? So it's lying down and you can just boop, put it right on the back of there. So we'll do that for all of our numbers. If you want to pause to do that, you can do that and then we'll do the next part. Okay, so for the next part, I am going to use my masking tape just to kind of help me mark my space. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm just going to put it on my arm. If you're using your tape, you can use yours too, or really any object that you have. What I mean by that is we need to make sure that our, uh, our clock is big enough for us to move around. Okay, so we're gonna use our body and one other object to do that. So we're gonna start with our 12. So I've got my one and my two right here. And I'm gonna put this up at the top where, oops, let me turn it around this way. So I'm gonna put this over here on the ground. There's my two, so that's where my head's going to go in just a second. So I'm gonna got my one and my two. Excellent, okay. So now I am going to lie down and put my head by at the top of where the one and the two is. So I need to just kind of make sure it's not touching, but it's at the top. Okay, so I've got my head. All right, we're thumbs up for that now. Where my feet are, that's where our number six is going to go. So I'm going to use this tape to put it where the number six needs to be. And now I know where to put my number six so I can get up and I can make sure that my clock is big enough. So I've got my tape right where my feet, well, well, feet were and I'll get my number six. So I'm going to put my six right below that tape. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. So there's my 12 up at the top and there's my six down at the bottom. So next we're going to figure out where our three and our nine need to go. So I've got my tape here and I'm going to grab my three. All right, so I'll just hold on to that, but we need to go back to our 12 and our six. We're making a really round circle, so I've got my feet about here. Okay, now our three is going to be at the halfway point between our 12 and our six, so I'm gonna sit up. I'm going to swing my feet around to the side, uh, and this is where my number three is going to be. So I'll put my three right here. Aha! Uh -huh. Now, I'm going to swing my feet around the other side. I'll lie down 
make sure I'm pretty good on this side. Uh, and I'll put my tape down. And that's where our number nine is going to go. Okay, we've got our number nine. So now we're going to fill in the rest of the numbers, just trying to keep them equidistant. So I'm going to start with my one and my two here. So making sure I'm trying to keep about the same amount of space in between my numbers. That looks pretty good to me. So I have a one and a two right here. A two, but two is a little crooked. Okay, then I've got my three, so we're going to fill it in with our four and our five next. And I'm just looking at my clock to try to kind of make sure that I have the same amount of space in between my six and my five as I do my five and my four, and as I do my four and my three. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, there we go. All right, so our six, what comes after six? That's seven and eight. So we put them in between the nine. So seven comes next and then eight. So we have our seven and our eight. Here's our nine. So next we have our 10, 11, and we've got our 12 already. So let's see our 10 about, I'm not gonna stick it all the way down until I've got my 11 in place. Aha, 10, our 11. Okay, let's see how that looks. and move my 11 around, but uh, here we go. So now we're ready to play with learning some things about telling time. So we're going to actually use different parts of our bodies to show the minute hand and the hour hand. So on the face of the clock, we have something called the minute hand, which shows the minute, and the hour hand, which shows the hour. We also have a second hand, which shows the second. So we're not going to show the second hand for right now. And with our minute hand, we're gonna show uh, different, like fives. We're going to use our torso to show the hour and our legs to show the minutes. So I'll give you guys an example. Every, in between every number is five minutes. So I'm gonna start off with my feet at the 12, right? So I'm sitting up nice and tall. So I can move one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. When five minutes has passed, my feet would be facing the number one. And if we do five more minutes, our feet would be facing the number two. So we just showed a passage of 10 minutes because it's like counting by fives, five, 10. Now we'll show five more minutes would be 15. So this next one would be what? 15 plus five more is 20, plus five more is 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and once 55, five more minutes after that, that would be 60, and that means a whole hour would have passed. So there are 60 minutes in one hour. So our legs are going to be our minute hand. They'll show how many minutes we have, okay. But there are really 24 hours in a day. Now where we live, we do 12 hours during the daytime and 12 hours during the nighttime. So we could say one in the morning or one in the afternoon. So we're going to use our torso to show the hour. So this will be our hour hand from our belly to our head. So in order to do this part, 
we have to lay down. So I'm going to put my feet up here. Now my head is going to be facing 12 o'clock to start off with. You guys can see me. Okay. So this would be, if my head is facing 12 o'clock, it would be 12 o'clock. It would be the hour it is. Okay. So if my head was facing, let's move our head to 3 o'clock. That would show the hour that we're at at 3 o'clock, okay? If my head was facing 4, 5, mm -hmm, all the way, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, oh, 12. I am back. That was 12 hours. So if we went around one more time, that would have been 24 hours, which is how many hours we have in a day. So now let's see if we can show some different times using our torso as the hour hand and our legs as the minute hand. Okay, so we're going to try to show the time. 4.30, okay. So we need the hour hand to be facing towards the four, right? Okay, so usually on a clock, the hour hands are a little shorter than the minute hands. So we're gonna put our head towards the four. But what about the 30? We need to count out how many minutes is 30 minutes. So we have to start from the 12. Okay, so that's, from the 12 to the 1 is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So our legs are going to point toward the 6. So we'll make sure we're sitting in the middle. We'll be nice and straight and we'll keep our arms in like this. How can we make our head towards the 4 to show 430? Oh, we might have to tilt one to our side this way. Aha, uh -huh, we got 4.30. Let's see if you can do it too. Okay, now can you show 4.35? Aha, uh -huh, we have to bring our legs five more minutes. Okay, 4.40. There we go. 4.45. Uh-huh, I had to peek up, make sure I'm going in the right place. Uh-huh, 4.50. Four fifty-five, and what would be next after that? Ah, uh, well, what would come after four fifty-five? Five more minutes would be five o'clock. So let's move our heads toward the five, and our feet all the way up to the twelve. Okay, great. So let's see if you can now make. I'm going to see if you can figure out how to make eight o'clock with our bodies. So our head needs to be towards the eight, and then our feet would need to go up to the 12, right? Cause that's like zero minutes of the whole hour. So for eight o'clock, we put our head to the eight, and our feet to the 12. Very good. Okay, let's see if you can do 1015. How could we do 1015? We're going to use our bodies. So if it's 10 is the hour, our head goes to the 10, because that part is the hour hand and then 15 how would we figure out 15 we start up at 12 we do 5 10 15 okay so our legs go to the 3 and our head goes to the 10 that is 10 15 right there Maybe you can check and see what time it is and make that. Oh, for me right now, it is about 5.30. We already did that one. Oh, maybe you can figure out what time it is today 
like when you're watching it and make that time for yourself. So there's lots of different ways we can do it. All right. Thanks for joining me today, guys. I hope you had fun um, making your clock and telling time using your body. Um, don't forget we'll be posting a new lesson every day at 10 a.m. on the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel for kindergarten, first, and second grades. And each lesson is tied to the academic curriculum. You can also get these lessons on AOC as part of the Learn United program accessible on AOC, Cox Channel 16, or LUS Channel 4. Kindergarten lessons air at 8 a.m. and first and second grade lessons air at 9. Some lessons will be in visual arts and some will be in creative movement. So be sure to come back and make some art with us tomorrow. If you're interested in supporting some programs like this, visit Acadiana Center for the Arts.org. They are the nonprofit that manages the PACE program. Share our videos, spread the word, and keep making art. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.